Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of DABCC TV Take Three. Uh, I have botched the intro every single time, but this one is going to be good no matter what. So I am very excited about today. I think I'm botching the intro because I'm looking forward to this demo. We have David from Devolutions here, and they make a really neat product called Remote Desktop Manager. And come on, I'm a remote desktop guy. I'm a terminal services guy. I'm a Citrix guy from the early days. And so this is the stuff that really interests me. This is the stuff that turns me on and makes me excited. So I'm really, really happy to have David on. David, thank you for taking the time uh, to be with us today. Thank you very much. It's okay. a pleasure for me. Oh, boy. Thank you. So, uh, okay. So, with no further ado, let's just dive into this. Uh, real quick, can you tell us who you are and tell us a little bit about Devolutions? Yes. Uh, I'm David F. Vieux. I'm the founder of the company. I started the company in 2004, and we have designed and developed a product called Remote Desktop Manager. It's an all-in-one application to integrate any types of remote connection and credential into one centralized application. Perfect. That's what I like to hear. So, um, with no further ado, do let's just uh, dive into this uh, into your demo. Can you? What are you going to show us today? Yes. Uh, let Let's do it. We will. We will uh, see the application with the basic XML data source, and after that, we will go with uh, a centralized SQL Server database to see the enterprise features when you have more than one user sharing the information and the sessions. So let's begin with starting the application when you are ready. Yep, we are ready anytime. It's all yours. Okay, great. So when you start the application for the first time, uh, you will be prompt for a default encryption. You, if you want to enter your own master key to protect your data, it's up to you. But you could start with the default encryption, which is use our uh, own private key. The password will always be encrypted no matter what. We take security uh, seriously and want to make sure that your data is not uh, available to everybody. So the first time you start the application, you have an empty dashboard. What you need to do is enter any type of connection that you want to integrate in the application. So let's begin with the small um, app button in the quick bar. You will see that we have a lot of type of connection. Just to show you, we have Citrix, we have Demware, we have FTP, we integrate LogMeIn, Remote Desktop, Radmin, Screen Connect, TeamViewer. Wow. It, it's a lot of integration. We don't replace those tools most of the time. So for example, if you want to use TeamViewer, you will still need your TeamViewer license. So let's begin really simply with remote desktop. I type remote desktop, select, and I fill in all the information, the name. You see it's really similar to MSTSC, the default remote desktop client. You have a lot of settings, display, uh, the sound, the uh, keyboard mapping, the program. So let's open the application in embedded mode directly. I will show you. You enter your credential, you store it in the application. You can see that you could reveal or not the password. You can change the image um, and you save it. When you are ready, you open the connection. This is my PDC server. Sorry, it's in French. I'm a French Canadian, by the way. <laughs> so you see, I've not been prompt for the credential because it's saved in the application. And if I want, I could use also the uh, credential store to store the credential and share it with multiple sessions. In this case, I will need to create another one. It's the same. We integrate a lot of remote connection tools, but we also integrate a lot of credential tools. We have our own password vault manager, but we integrate others like KeyPass, uh, we'll give you a small demo of KeePass later, but in this case, I will just create my entry with the same credential, um, link it to my remote session, and I will again be able to reopen the connection. No problem. I like it. I like yeah. the integration with all those different uh, single sign-on solutions. That's very cool. Yes. I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I, well, I use uh, 1Password uh, um, a lot of times as, a, as I am a Mac user. 
and yeah. uh, it's neat to, to see that there. Yes, but you have to, to be careful with some of them because one password does not provide an API. So our integration is a simulation of a website. It's, it's, it's different. But KeePass, we have a plugin for KeePass. Our goal is to make sure that you, you are able to, to reuse your software, what you are used to. We don't want to replace anything. We want to make sure that we enhance your, your, uh, your day and your product. We, for example, if I go in a credential and I choose key pass, you will see that I will be prompt and I will have to select my key pass entry. So all I need to do is open. I will be prompt for my key pass. I will enter my password. So in this case, I have test. I will choose test. And now RDM will be connected to the key pass. So the next time I will open the connection, it will reuse my key pass database. You see the, the little uh, uh, the little icon there that's a link with key pass. So if I edit again my session, I could have all my no well, test test is not a good example, but <laughs> this one. I hope it's the uh, the right password. So the next time I will open the connection Key pass will open if it's closed because I will have to enter the, uh, the, the password. And you see, because I have the little plugin of Remote Desktop Manager in Key Pass, I'm able to extract the password from Key Pass and open my, my remote uh, desktop connection. Very cool. If we also take a look at the remote desktop, we integrate the normal RDP type. But you can also open to uh, uh, your Windows Azure uh, connection, or if you have an Hyper-V server, you could open directly the uh, Hyper-V uh, instance. Very cool. So it's not it's not this a uh, remote connection. It, it's it's a large concept. It could be a website. It could be also VPN. So we integrate a lot of VPN in in this case. I have a small list of all the VPN that we integrate. The goal is to open those VPN just before the connection. So what you could do is select, let's say I select the Microsoft VPN. I will configure it again, username, password. And I could determine that the application, the VPN will be open only if I'm unable to ping the host. So if I'm working from home, it will detect that the host is unavailable and it will open the VPN. But if I'm working from the office, it won't open the VPN since I'm able to ping the host. So that's a small tweak that we, we could do. Can save a lot of information, contact, notes. If you need a custom field with an invoice number or anything you want to save, you can save it in the application. It's a big, big data store of information related to a specific host. Um, you see it's the same with the description. You could add any type of description in bold. Mm, oh, it's the font. It's a bold. And you, you, you add it. What's nice also, if you, if you know, uh, some people might use a remote desktop connection manager from Microsoft. Do, do you know it, Doug? Yeah, a little bit. Yes. So I will start it. It's, it's a great product. Seriously. They're only, they only have one problem. You can share the information, and it's only RDP. In our case, we have LogMe and TeamViewer, and you, you saw it the, uh, earlier that we have a lot of integration. But if you're already using Remote Desktop Connection Manager, it's not, it's not a problem because we also have the import. And we import from a lot of application, TeamViewer Manager, and Remote Desktop Connection Manager. In this specific case, if I choose that, I will get all me, my uh, connection, and they will be imported directly in Remote Desktop Manager with the right configuration. So you can save time if you're already using the, the, this product. Um, so uh, we integrate also uh, some import or export. You can export the data, but you can import also just the login. So, for example, the one password that you add, you could import it. We have different types. I want to show you our dashboard. 
So if you use something like um, Amazon, Amazon, we have the Amazon console, we have the Hyper-V console, we have VMware console, the Xen server. I'm sure you would like to see the, the small Xen server that, that, that we have. So again, you see each connection type has its own specific credential uh, or settings. In this case, I will just configure my Xen server um, IP to, to connect. And all I need to, to do is open the connection, and you will see my virtual machine uh, with the dashboard that we, we have. And I could start, suspend, resume. We have the same with Citrix. We have the same with Hyper-V. We have the same with the Microsoft Azure console. Uh, honestly, I. It's better, but uh, at the beginning, I was not really happy with the uh, Silverlight integration of it, Azure. So we did our own console to, to be able to manage the uh, Microsoft Azure that we, we use. And we also have the cloud browser integration. What I mean by that, um, if you use Amazon S3 or if you use uh, Azure Storage or Dropbox, you can create an entry and be able to, to navigate as a, like an FTP. Just for this example, I will, I will show you the, the FTP browser. So I choose uh, for the FTP, we integrate FileZilla with SCP, but we also integrate our own FTP built-in, so you don't have any client to deploy. I will configure my FTP. And You see, we, we have a lot of possibility, and it, it's only the beginning. Your imagination is, is, is our limit. So in this example, if I open my FTP, we see it's all in Remote Desktop Manager with different tab page, and I could upload, download the file, get the description. That's uh, very cool. We have the same for Dropbox and S3, and it's all in one application. We have the same with uh, the SSH, if I show you. When I create, I could decide to use Putty. Many people uh, like uh, Putty, but we also have our own Telnet or SSH client if you want to uh, to use it on a USB key. You will only have Remote Desktop Manager to, to deploy. Or well, one last example of application that we support. Mm -hmm. So again, I just double click on it. I hope my machine is up. Yes, it is. So you see, I have my uh, SSH shell open yeah. with my virtual machine and everything at the same, at the same, in the same data store. If I show you my data source, it's an XML file it's stored with the password encrypted and you, you have everything uh, to work on. Um, if you want, if you have any question about the product, uh, the, 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 the connection type that we support, you could go on our website. If you have any suggestion, you could send us an, e an email because we have an SDK. So the last thing I want to show you before I go in the uh, enterprise part, which is the sharing, it's our add-on manager because we integrate a lot of tools. Um, we have more VPN, we have tools for the uh, session, we have uh, ISL Live Desk, we have NetHub, Net Support. Uh, it's once you install it, for example, if I want to integrate the SQL Management Studio, all I need to do is double click, install it, I will have to restart the application, uh, and I will be able to create SQL Server Management Studio add-on. With that, I will be able to open my SQL Management Studio and get my credential from Remote Desktop or from KeePass. Remote Desktop become a bridge between all those applications. And this goes uh, further with the integration of web and uh, um, also um, SQL uh, information. If you manage a lot of uh, uh, connection string, you could create an entry, which is uh, the type of type um, connection string 
and you will be able to set up your connection string with your host name and password and you will also be able to apply data report directly in the application. So if again you need more it, it's up to you. The last part of Remote Desktop Manager is the Password Vault Manager feature which is another product but is integrated with the Enterprise Edition. So it's what we call the data entry is an account, a bank information, alarm code, credit card. You can store anything you want in the application. It's a secure vault of session, but a secure vault of data and credential. So again, you, you see that I can store. I use it internally at Devolution to store our um, software serial numbers. And this way, we, we are able to, to share those information when we need to, or if we have to renew a, uh, a software, we have the expir expiration, so we get everything centralized. We replace, in this case, Excel. Many people use Excel to store those information, and it, it, it's a much better way to do that. And a remote connection for some people is really a remote desktop connection, but in our case, it's not. We integrate also website. So we have multiple login. We use it. So for example, I will just create um, a web connection to my forum. So I will open it embed it again. So the forum for devolution, if you have a question, it's devolutions.net. I will do the auto login with the default. So I will fill in all the information. You see I have a strong password in this case because it's my personal login. And again, I double click on it. It will open the forum for me. And you will see there that it will get auto pull my mistakes. And I'm able to plug in directly. You see this way you could share those information and never give access to your employee if you use it. You, you give them only access to the session, but you don't give them access to, to the content of the credential. So do you want to see how to use it with SQL Server? Yeah, yeah, I'd love that. OK, because that's great. But it's worth more than that for, for a team. You want to make sure Remote Desktop Manager has been built to work in team. It's really at its, at its best when you share those information. So all I need to do is create a new data source. We support a lot of data source. We have our online vault. If you want to be hosted in the cloud by us, we have that product. You have the XML, which is the default uh, data store. Uh, we have the Amazon S3 if you want to store it on Amazon. If you want to store it in a Dropbox to have it everywhere where you go and you have access, it's also possible. And by the way, you don't need the Dropbox client. You only fill in the information and we will access your Dropbox account, which is great because many people have their own, uh, many people have their own Dropbox account, but they have a corporate account too. So they can have both on the same machine. You can store it on FTP access. In this case, um, MySQL and SQL Server are great because they support, uh, for us, we give access to log and attachment. So let's start with Let's go with uh, Remote Desktop Manager on SQL Server. So all I need to do is create my database. Uh, I will use SQL Express and create a new database. I want to make sure, just test, test my connection, create a database, upgrade the database, successful. So. The, now I have a configured data source that I can use. If I go, sorry, if I choose here, it's empty. I will create a new entry just for this. Again. You see it? Yep. So after that, what I have to do is make sure to create my users. So I go in administration, and I will create, to begin, security group to uh, be able to manage my session. So 
I will do it one for admin. Those are not related to the Active Directory groups, by the way. It's the security group for remote desktop manager. Let's say it's dev. When I create the user, uh, so LBM v user one, we'll give him password. I don't use in this case the integrated security. The integrated security is from SQL Server. It's the Active Directory security. I will create a new user. This user won't be an administrator. He, he will be able to view and add session from uh, admin, but he won't be able to view or add in dev. Um, he won't be able to import, export, and he won't be able to reveal the password, which is which could be a security issue if he is able to view. Remember the small eyes icon that we had? Yep. This will be disabled if the user does not have the, the right. So as soon as I have that, the user is created. And now if I create a new data source, let's pretend it's um, on another uh, computer. I will just do a duplicate. And I will use, it was RDM. Do you remember the name? I, user, I think. <laughs> I think it's that. That's the user database. The database. Okay. So in this case, if I switch to, oops, I will just go back. Um, so user one. I get back and I go in user one. I see this one, but I'm not the administrator, so I'm unable to to add or edit the user. And if I go back to my other login, I will be able to, to manage it. If I edit the session and I decide that this session is now only available for deaf people, the next time I go back, it won't be available for the user. So this way you could restrict credit card access, serial number access, session access, and you could also uh, give different uh, level of security per folder because it's also possible to create folder and groups. So let's say I create group one. You could decide to type your group by defi defining that this group is a company. So say if I go back in this one, I will be able to drag directly the, the, the session in the group. We have inherited security by group. I will just go back there and put the security to none. Turn there, you see. Uh, we have default, uh, sorry, not this one. We have, oh, I'm unable to edit for this one. Okay, so. Just want to make sure we have default credential in the uh, in the session, but if we want, we could remove or leave them as the default. But each user could have his own security or credential. In this case, I will just override the default and use mine as the default security settings. So next time I double, I think it's home. Next time I open it, it will use my, uh, I think I need to specify the ID, damn it, the man. Right. Run in embedded mode. Oh, not good. I think it's the wrong password, that's why. But just to show you, you could define your home credential instead of leaving them blank. And you will see if I go in the uh, in the view, I will be able to see that uh, today or uh, who has used the the, the different uh, connection. We could also add attachment to to a connection if you want to have, for example. Um, let's say I want to add this. I don't. I don't know if I have a picture or maybe a document. Maybe 
a small picture. So I could add attachment, and if I double click on it, oh, it will open my attachment directly. And I have the logs specifically for the one selected. So you see, I try to open there, 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 and I edit it. And also, what's nice, we also have the, if I'm the administrator, I have the, I can delete, undelete those who have been deleted, but I'm also able to, um, to view the change history of the session. So I'm able to see what has changed and keep track of all the changes. So in a nutshell, that's, that's the feature of the, the uh, remote desktop manager when you use it with uh, the, uh, the SQL server or the MySQL uh, server database. And you get all the feature. Uh, you can say dashboard, console, access to database, remote session. Uh, it, it's up to you. I, uh, David, I'm I'm very impressed. Uh, I have not. I must confess, I've not seen this in a while. And uh, you guys have done a tremendous amount of work. I mean, this is really this. The name doesn't do justice. You know what I mean? Yes, thank you. It's so, it's, uh, it's remote desktop manager, but now it's much more than that. Yeah, it's re remote manager is what it is. This is a very very impressive product. Uh, well, so you mentioned the enterprise version. What what do you? How does? How would somebody go about getting this product? Do you have a free version, enterprise version? You know, what does it cost? Things like that. It's uh, it's really affordable because we have the standard edition, which is free, and we have the enterprise edition, which is seventy dollars per user. Um, it's a perpetual uh, license, uh, but we include one year of maintenance and support. The next year, if you want to get the newer version. It's 30% uh, of the original price. And you can buy a site license or a global license if you want. We have a special package for, for, for that. And the standard edition and the enterprise edition uh, are very similar, but the, the limitation in the standard edition is mostly the type of data source that you can create. If you are an IT guy and you work alone, uh, the standard edition most of the time is perfect for you, but if you work, in a team and you want to share and give security access, the Enterprise Edition is really, really for you. Very impressive, very impressive. So if somebody wants to learn more, what, what do they need to do? Where do they go to download this? RemoteDesktopManager.com Easy. Easy as one, two, three. RemoteDesktopManager.com Simple. Exactly. Um, we like to keep these things right about 30 minutes. You did a perfect job on the demo. Gave me just enough time to, to close the show off. But um, before we do that, is, uh, is there anything else? Uh, anything else? Uh, I, I'm very, very impressed, sort of almost speechless, to be honest with you. I, I, I wasn't, uh, wasn't expecting everything that you showed us. So uh, I really love the, you know, I love it. I, I love the Dropbox integration always in, uh, intrigues me. Not that that's a big play in here, but... Uh, you you and you you support everything almost. Uh, it's just that's very impressive. Where are you going with this product? What's coming down the pike? What what wanna be is uh, is be a document manager of anything. Make sure that all the IT information is centralized. Uh, the logs, the, because I haven't show you that we have also the inventory. You see, we have a lot of tools that we integrate, the trace, ping, but we also have another type, which is the, uh, the scripting. You can script mostly anything. You can create action before and after you open a connection. You could run a PowerShell script, a VB script, um, a template, a Dulemi, a query, a macro. So our goal is make sure that you have all the tools you need for your day-to-day if you are a support team, you will have the log to, to, for the billing. If you are an IT manager, uh, you will have all the inventory in one location. So we want to be the SAP of the IT. Why? Because most of the other software, the customer is the central point. In our case, it's the host, the, the computer, the workstation, the device, because it could be a router, it could be a workstation, it could be a server, but it's... In IT, that's the central point. That, that's where everything begins. It's, it's not the user. The customer is a property of a desktop. For example, in LogMeIn, most of the people use LogMeIn to do their support. But they support computer. They don't really support people. 
That's that's why the, we are different because we go from the computer to the user and not the the opposite. Very interesting. Very interesting. A lot of times, uh, I mean, that's an interesting. Uh, you know, paradigm shift you, you just did there. And in many ways, doing it the opposite way makes sense because you want to put the user first, but you are putting the user first because the user is, is more or less that host or that device. And, and in return for the user experience is ultimately better than sort of having extra hops, right? Yes, but when you need to install an update on a computer, it's not on a user, it's on a computer. Yeah, yeah. So, that's... so we want to have a to-do manager also in the application eventually. That, that's what's coming. And we are going on the Mac platform and the mobile platform because we have so many information in the application. Why not give access to that information on your other device? What do you mean by that? You, you're supporting, are you going to have a version of this for the Mac? Yes, we are currently working on the Mac version. Uh, not all the connection type will be supported, but sure. we will support RDP for, of course, uh, all the web. Uh, we are currently working on it. So, so for example, if you define a property in uh, in that connection, uh, you could say, okay, this is a terminal server. Uh, my OS is, uh, let's say, it's uh, Windows 2008. Uh, that information I could have access to that, or the logs I could have access to the logs from my mobile phone. So, since it's a centralized database, why not put everything at the same location? Sure, sure. Well, if you're looking for beta testers for the Mac side, let me know. Okay. Uh, but uh, I'll definitely get this thing installed over on my PC side on uh, on my Zen client box. So this is very, very impressive. Uh, uh, I must admit, I uh, like I said, I have not seen it in a, in a while. And wow, you guys have done some amazing work. So guys out there w watching, listening, I hope you enjoyed this also. Uh, David, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, before we go, I'll give you the last word if there's anything we forgot. But uh, I, I think you did an amazing job, and I'm very impressed with your solution. I just want to thank you for your time and for, for your comments. Oh, no, thank you. Thank you. So, guys out there listening, our viewers, thank you guys all so much for listening to this episode of DABCC TV. As always, we try to post as many of these as we can, get great products on, on, on the show to show you guys. And this one definitely was. I'm very impressed with what, what David and, and the crew over there got, uh, have done with Remote Desktop Manager. Uh, very, very impressed. So, I hope you guys are too. Just head over to remotedesktopmanager.com and have a download it's it's free for you to download play around with it and then you know grow into it i think you guys will really really love it uh and of course uh you know what else do i say but definitely visit dabcc.com for the latest and greatest and virtualization and cloud news and all that jazz and on that note i will with no further ado i'll just go ahead and call this an episode so thanks everyone for listening to dabcc tv